An innocent ride home takes a gruesome turn. It was a crime of absolutely no logical reason. A family's desperate search for their missing brother turns up nothing until a psychic 2,000 miles away tells them where to look. This is where you have to go, and this is where you find your brother's vehicle. She had a lot of details. She didn't get them from us. She didn't get them from the, the media. But her visions make legal history. There was total and complete silence during her testimony. Never heard anything like that before. River Ridge, Louisiana, a small town on the banks of the Mississippi River, a suburb of New Orleans. Pretty much people in River Ridge know each other pretty well. It's just sort of a, a small slice of American pie type of community. You wouldn't expect a person, particularly a hardworking carpenter, to suddenly disappear. But in June of 1987, that's exactly what did happen. 27-year-old Andre Daigle vanished without a trace. My mother called me Friday morning and then told me that Andre was, you know, missing and she hadn't heard from him. You know, we're close-knit family and very tight, and Andre wouldn't leave the pets without food or water for one. And the other thing is, you know, generally somebody would hear from him on a daily basis. Andre's older brother, Chris, contacts the police immediately, but they're not convinced there's a problem and are slow to act. The fact that he was a 27-year-old grown man, the police were like, what makes you think he's missing? But the family believes something is very wrong and begin their own investigation, retracing his last steps. Are you sure you haven't seen this guy? The night he disappeared, he, he and uh, Nick Shelley went to uh, have dinner together, and then they went out to Mitchell's to shoot some pool. Andre and his best friend Nick were playing pool for beers. Loser buys. Andre lost the first game, and at the bar, he met a young woman who called herself Thelma. And they sure chatted, you know, just make a small talk. When I talk to Nick about it, he tells me that he felt that she seemed to kind of hide her face, so he really didn't get a good look at her. It was a bit odd, but, you know, that's just something you don't think about. I mean, these are the things you think about later, after they played a few games and had a few drinks. You know, they were getting ready to leave, and uh, that's when them asked Andre for a ride home. Andre agreed, and Nick Shelley went home separately in his own car. It's the last time he will ever see his best friend. Four days pass, and nothing. 2,000 miles away in California, Andre's sister Elise is desperate to help. A friend suggests she visit a psychic. When she came to see me, uh, Elise told me she had a brother that was missing. I just asked if she brought a picture of her brother and a map with her, and she said yes. Rosemary Kerr lives in Escondido, California. She claims she has a special talent for finding missing people. She'll need it. She's never been to Louisiana and never met the Daigle family. When I go to the picture, I don't need to look at it because the minute I put my fingers on it, I get vibrations. So my fingers, uh, say it's like somebody reading Braille. I'm making my connection. Everybody else is out. The connection Rosemary makes is immediate and profound. As I'm touching the picture, I'm seeing all these things behind my eyes. I was telling Elise how I see her brother in his dark vehicle, and she denied this. She says, no, he drives a little white car, but I needed to go with the dark car because this is what Andre was showing me. Elise is not aware that her brother has recently bought a new vehicle, a black Ford pickup. Now Rosemary focuses on the map of Louisiana. And as I run my finger along the maps, my fingers tell me where to stop. It's a vibration in my fingers. And I stopped, and I opened my eyes, and I asked Elise. I says, Elise, do you know this place? Do you recognize this right in here? And she says, this is Slidell. She says, I know it. I says, if you know this place, you have to do it now, do it quick. This is where you have to go, and this is where you find your brother's vehicle and find out where he is. Slidell is 30 miles from the Daigle home in River Ridge. Chris and the family had just arrived back after a full day of searching. They were not prepared for what would happen next. 
We were all in the kitchen with the mats laid out, trying to figure out, okay, where are we gonna go tomorrow? What are we gonna do? That's when the phone rang, and my mother got the call from Elise. I just had a reading with a psychic here. And then you know, she says, the lady says, go to slide down. Well, man, when she said that, everybody in the room just got shook. You know, you could feel goosebumps, and it was like the, the a spirit had walked through there and touched you on the shoulder just to let you know, you know, this is real, you gotta go. Within minutes, Chris and his family are racing towards Slidell, guided, they believe, by the spirit of their missing brother. They went out in their vehicles to look for Andre. I told them to talk to Andre. And Lee said, why? I says, I want the open connection. So we did, you know, I mean, we knew he was frightened. I mean, we didn't know if he was alive or not. And we just wanted to reach out to him, you know, and, and let him know that, you know, his family was there. So. Then, incredibly, there on the interstate, Chris spots Andre's truck ahead. The black pickup is heading towards Slidell, exactly where the psychic said it would be. I actually kind of passed the truck up at first. You know, I didn't even expect to see it, really, but drove up. Hey, was that it? Sure enough, that was it. Of course, we didn't recognize who was in the you know, driver's seat and who was in there driving it. How could a psychic 2,000 miles away know where to find Andre's truck? But where is Andre, and who's at the wheel? In River Ridge, Louisiana, the mysterious disappearance of 27-year-old Andre Daigle has his family searching everywhere. Five days pass without any success, then, a California psychic, 2,000 miles away, points them in the right direction. This is where you have to go, and this is where you find your brother's vehicle. And sure enough, going down the interstate, on our way to slide down, and there was the truck. Of course, we didn't recognize who was in the you know, driver's seat and who was in there driving it. So we decided at that point that we'd just kind of stick with them and see where they led us. Chris tails the truck for nearly 30 minutes. Suddenly, the truck veers off the interstate and leads them down a deserted side road. They turn the truck around, facing back towards us, and then they killed the motor and turned the lights on. Well, that was very spooky, you know, because now we're like, we knew that they knew we were following them. They drove by real slow and just kind of checked us out and looked at us, you know. And, and as they got by, they took off. We had just drove down that road not seconds before, and it was empty. Here we are, 30 seconds later, we go down the same road, and who do we see? A police car. As luck would have it, they ran across uh, the only patrol car in the Pearl River area parked alongside the road that they were on. You know, we're all yelling, yeah, oh, get that truck. Man, this is my brother. You know, that's his truck. He's missing. You got to stop these guys. And that's when we got into, like, a high-speed chase. When police forced the truck to pull over, they believe they're investigating a stolen vehicle. I kind of walked up a little bit closer, and, and I asked him, I said, where's my brother? You know, what'd you do with my brother? Where is he? Well, of course, they wouldn't answer. But where is Andre? 2,000 miles away in California, psychic Rosemary Kerr believes she knows the answer. When I felt myself holding my head and basically speaking louder and louder and louder because I could, I could feel the pain, and I started yelling to Elise, my head is killing me. And as I felt that, uh, I went into, I want to say, a different mode because I knew that I was looking for somebody that had already left the Earth plane. But Rosemary withholds this piece of information. Uh, Elise did not ask if her brother was alive or dead. 
I am just the conductor of the words. I'm just a channel. But in order for it to be done the proper way, it has to go through the proper channels. It's for the authorities. And the authorities were working fast. They identified the two men as 24-year-old Charles Gervais of New Orleans and 21-year-old Michael Phillips of Kenner. The two are brought in on stolen vehicle charges. These two were not uh, new to crime. Captain James Gallagher of the Kenner Police Department is one of the officers in charge of the investigation. The chief and, and his officers uh, began interviewing uh, Charles Gervais and uh, Michael Phillips uh, as to how they came in possession of the truck. At first, Gervais isn't talking, but under questioning, his friend Michael Phillips eventually cracks. He describes a senseless, brutal murder, a murder committed, he says, by Gervais. Once Charles realized that Mike was talking to the authorities, uh, he demanded to speak to him, wanted to get the record straight. They talked about how they had Andre brought back to their apartment with Thelma. At some point, they retrieve a claw hammer out of Andre's truck. Then uh, they take turns beating him with his own claw hammer. The killer's motive was more extraordinary than even the police could have imagined. The question was asked, why would you kill Andre? What was the purpose behind it? And Gervais tells me this story about uh, hearing about a prostitution ring somewhere in Texas. And him and Mike decide, well, we don't want to work for a living. We'll just go to Texas, and we'll kill whoever's running this operation, and we'll take it over, and, and uh, the women will work for us. So they decide, well, we, if we're going to do this, we have to know before we get involved that we can actually take a life. So they come up with the scheme of sending Thelma out to bars and to look for someone, uh, anyone, whoever she brings home, that person's gonna die. And unfortunately, in this case, uh, the person she brought home was Andre. Andre Daigle was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, picked at random and killed as a dress rehearsal for a gangland hit, his body dumped in a swamp. Police recover the body. Both men are charged with first-degree murder and a warrant goes out for their accomplice, 21-year-old Thelma Horn of Kenner. Now police have to inform the family of their worst fear. Their youngest son, Andre, is dead. You know, I never dreamed he would be dead. But it didn't work out that way. But at least we were able to find him and find the people who committed the crime. But this case is far from over. Even with a confession, both men could still plead not guilty in court. If uh, the defendant doesn't take the stand and doesn't testify on his own behalf, you cannot use his statement against him. In Louisiana, a not guilty plea can lead to the death penalty. Gervais sees the writing on the wall, admits his guilt, and is sentenced to life in prison. But Thelma Horn and Michael Phillips roll the dice. They plead not guilty and opt for a trial. I think Michael was more concerned about consequences. He knew that we already pretty much had the whole story of what occurred, but he wanted to try and downplay his participation. Gallagher needs as much evidence as possible. When he learns from Chris that it was a psychic's vision that led them to Andre's truck and exposed their killers, he reluctantly gives her a call. You know, I deal with facts. I deal with things, you know, tangible things. And up until that point, I was still trying to figure out, you know, what the angle was. How did this happen? Hello? It was a phone call that would change a cop and make courtroom history. It was total and complete silence during her testimony. Never heard anything like that before. In Louisiana, the disappearance of a 27-year-old carpenter, Andre Daigle, has ended in murder. A California psychic has helped the Daigle family and police track down the killers. Now the police must work with a psychic to make sure the suspects are locked away forever. Well, I learned that the way these people were actually caught was a tip from a psychic. Uh, a lady named Rosemarie Kerr, who lived in California. 
When Captain Gallagher contacts Rosemarie, she recounts the details of her reading with Andre's sister. So I come into Andre's vibration, um, getting more and more uh, headaches uh, coming in very, very strongly. Well, she was talking about, I'm feeling pain to my head right now as I'm, as I'm uh, handling his photograph. I already knew from, uh, from the investigation that Andre had been beaten with a hammer. The autopsy revealed that Andre had been struck 10 times in the head. She talks about where the body's at and where Andre's at. I could see and also feel a freeway or a roadway that was to my right and high above me. I knew there was a railroad track to the other side. I knew there was marshes there. The number seven kept coming in and cupping, coming in very strongly. When Gallagher travels back to the location where Daigle's body was found, he's amazed at the psychic's accuracy. We got off on exit number seven right down the road to get here. As Rose told me during my interview with her, she described a, a long bridge. And what we have behind me here is Interstate 55, which runs for about 24 miles elevated through the swamp. She indicated there'd be water all around Andre. Well, here we are next to the swamp here. She had a lot of details that uh, she didn't get them from us, she didn't get them from the, the media, and it's just, I was amazed, but I became a believer after talking with her. But could a psychic's visions hold up in a court of law? W.J. LeBlanc, a Louisiana district attorney, thinks Rosemary's testimony is key. From an evidentiary standpoint, there were some people in the office who were skittish about using a psychic during a trial. My position was, that she was a fact witness and based upon what she saw someone else relayed that information to someone else which led to the arrest of the defendants the brutal and bizarre murder of andre daigle makes front page news but what really grabs headlines is the psychic this case uh, in many ways um, was sort of a bell welter case in establishing uh, psychic uh, involvement as a important forensic tool in conducting investigations in cases that were very difficult. Richard Boyd was the court reporter at the Daigle trial. In my 10 years of covering courts, it was the most amazing, astounding uh, chain of circumstances that I ever ran across. It would be the first time in U.S. legal history that a psychic would take the stand and describe how her visions helped to solve a murder. In a suburb of Louisiana, when a young carpenter disappears, a psychic in California tells the family exactly where to look, but what they find exposes a gruesome and bizarre murder. Determined to get a conviction, the state makes a daring move and puts a psychic on the witness stand. I didn't feel uh, any qualms, no pressures or anything. It felt like it was the normal thing to do. February 2nd, 1988, one year after the murder, the state presents its case to a packed courtroom. W.J. LeBlanc, the DA, outlines for the jury the gruesome details of Andre Daigle's last hours. On the night of June 9, 1987, Andre Daigle was playing pool with his best friend, Nick Shelley. At the bar, he meets a young woman, Thelma Horn. She later asks for a lift home. Inside the apartment, Charles Gervais and Michael Phillips ambush Andre, attacking him with a hammer taken from a toolbox in his truck. Their botched murder finally ended when the two men used a vacuum cord to strangle Andre to death. They wrapped his body in a curtain and hid him in the back of a couch. The following night, they dumped his body in a swampy marsh below the causeway. The evidence against the two men is compelling. Now the DA calls the psychic to the witness stand to help seal the prosecution case. You could hear a pen drop in that courtroom. I mean, people were just enraptured by it, just totally focused on her. Thank you. There's an old Rosemary Kerr tells the jury how her vision led the Daigles to Andre's missing truck. You know, the emotion, it, the, it was just a chill went through the room. 
At the close of the state's case, faced with the evidence, Michael Phillips changes his plea to guilty. He was headed straight for the electric chair. The evidence was overwhelming. Um, the jury was hanging on every word of every witness. With, without that uh, information provided by Rose, which eventually led to the arrest, it, he would have been a, possibly another John Doe, an uh, unsolved homicide. In a separate trial, the killer's accomplice, Thelma Horn, is found guilty of second-degree murder. With the help of the psychic's testimony, all three are serving life sentences. I feel that this whole scenario wasn't in our hands, but in a higher power. And we all just did our job. And I have to give credit to the departments uh, that work with people like me and realize if we can give them just one little piece of the puzzle and that could help them, that's what we're about. The Daigle family was devastated. To this day, is still devastated to a large extent by, by this senseless crime. A promising young man who was hardworking lost his life for absolutely no reason. Andre was, it was a great brother. You know, his life was cut so short, I don't know if he, if he had time to even figure that out. Here, here's Rosemary, you know, a little lady living out there in California, you know, 2,000 miles away from us. I think that someone has that ability, you know, to, to make contact and, and, and into the spirit world like that and enable to help, but she's connected. Mm -hmm.